meta game and meta modernism what the fuck meta game is like a real life mmorpg with the short term goal of being a decentralized factory in the dao space and the long term goal of finding the most optimal ways to play life it's kind of the opposite of effective altruism. It's about helping and empowering people one by one, hoping some of them will impact tens, hundreds, or thousands of others, or at least just a few more. Think about it. We have this great new technology with literally shit tons of potential for epic amounts of positive impact, yet the space is littered with scams. It's unlikely we'll make a great change if the way people think and feel doesn't change. In fact, we don't need a grand scheme for global well-being, any crazy top-down planning of global utopias, simply helping people become better peer-to-peer. -peer. Help people level up, take control of their lives, and improve communities around them. That's literally all it takes to change the world. In this video, we're going to be going over modernism, postmodernism, and metamodernism, meta ideology, focus on well-being, developmental stages, who makes it happen, and how it all relates to metagame. Assuming you already know about modernism and postmodernism, let's just briefly recap. Modernism is based around the beliefs in science, progress, and objective reality. It dominated the thinking of the 20th century with memes such as the individual self, liberal democracy, the left and right political spectrums, humanism, rationality, free will, and scientism. But postmodernists don't believe in progress. They're suspicious of our grand narratives and critical of power and hierarchies. Postmodernism sees what's wrong with modernism but fails to suggest anything useful. Metamodernism, on the other hand, is about keeping what works from modernism, maintaining the deconstructionist critical eye of postmodernism, and constructing a synthesis with the goal of solving three major problems of modernity. Alienation and neurotic anxieties, excessive global inequalities, and ecological unsustainability. It argues the source of most modern ailments is alienation and a lack of meaning, leading to negative feelings festering, manifesting as pathologies wrecking havoc on our world. That a better future is built through personal development, it seeks to create a society where personal development and psychological growth are top priorities. Compare the 17th century's scientific revolution, 18th century's enlightenment, 19th century's industrial and chemical revolutions, 20th century's combustion engine, to what's happening today. It's as if all these revolutions are happening all at once. Computers alone are augmenting, enhancing, and revolutionized anything from production, distribution, and transportation to governance and science. Top class education is widely available through online courses and being transformed through gamification. What's lacking today is people that are able to comprehend and manage all the complexity. Problems that require knowledge, creativity, patience, trust, and cooperation across industries, disciplines, and cultures. Current society is designed to achieve economic growth. Future society must be designed to achieve psychological growth. If we keep building ever more powerful tech but aren't making people more mentally stable, risk of the next Unabomber killing millions goes up exponentially. Consider Sweden, an extremely modern, liberal, well-functioning country, stabilized around an unyielding acceptance of the market economy and the welfare state. There are effectively no parties in Nordic countries that aren't green social liberals. The only way to make a conservative argument is by claiming to conserve the national values of green social liberalism. Even the Nationalist Party of Sweden is pro-abortion, pro-women's rights, and has a responsible environmental agenda. 
being from wealthy countries that don't skimp on public services and public goods, Nordic people are going full on post materialist. They value quality of life and social entrepreneurship over working long hours and financial success. This creates vicious circle of caring families raising decent humans. Looking into modern societies, you'll see three systems, civic sphere, democratic bureaucracy, and the market. Think of them as forms of governance for coordinating humans to create desirable outcomes for themselves and the society. Each has its pathologies and sicknesses as well as qualities. They depend on each other for their existence and keep each other in check. None are inherently good or evil. None is fundamentally or inherently superior to the others. The sooner we accept we shouldn't maximize nor get rid of any of the three, the sooner we can move on. The global capitalist system is based on perpetual growth on a finite planet. Financial systems seem to generate both growth and crises, increasingly concentrating wealth, which in turn seems to hijack our political systems through lobbying. Who's dealing with these problems best? Our dear Nordic friends. How? green social liberalism. Can't say this ideology is what built effective non-corrupt institutions, but the countries that seem to be faring best with high GDP per capita, least inequality, and happy citizens seem to be libertarian but also ecologically and socially minded. Green social liberalism 2.0 is about taking all three of these values to their extremes, societies that are extremely social extremely libertarian, and extremely green. The goal is to build societies that are without poverty and social insecurity, that have free enterprises and that are ecologically sustainable. In an obviously interconnected and co-evolving universe, metamodern society stops seeing humans as individuals with their own separate stories and problems, Instead, humans are seen as inseparable from language, relations, roles, and culture. Each human is seen as an open social process, a whirlwind of participation and co-creation with others. Society as a whole is seen as a self-organizing system which creates trans individuals who intercreate and recreate societies. Yes, even that dude who built his own cabin and is living in the woods a product of the culture, thousands of years of evolution and knowledge at his fingertips. Also, he wouldn't be uploading so many videos and hang out in voice channels if he wasn't so damn lonely now, would he, social animal? Why did Facebook become the most successful company? Connecting people. Top three downloaded apps in 2022, all social. Social animal, not an individual. Why? Even happiness and pain are social. Hurt, shame, and fear make us mean, controlling, bosses, jealous friends, bad parents, and teachers. Many people live with a pervasive lack of meaning, sludging along and numbing the pain with whatever distraction or happy pill. Some think money is the solution, end up with an ever-increasing appetite to fill the hole in their soul, some end up so crazed by unhappiness they end up killing. So metamodern politics aim to make everyone feel secure at the deepest psychological level so they can live authentically, leading to a sense of meaning and lasting happiness, leading to kindness and increased ability to cooperate, leading to deeper freedom and better outcomes for everyone, leading to shitloads lower likelihood your streets will be full of homeless people. Simply giving kids access to talk therapy reduced depression and thus suicide rates in northern Sweden from 9.5% to 1.5 in two years. Kids spending 15 minutes a day on mindfulness show less anxiety and aggression. Studies show the programs improve self-control, attentiveness, respect, school climate, and teachers' moods. The costs are extremely low and the effects are huge. The ridiculous part is that more welfare actually ends up saving tax money as well as boosts entrepreneurship and innovation. Just think of all the kids who grow up without a good role model and not feeling safe. 
the long-term costs of not entering the labor market, turning to illegal activities, police work, courts and prisons, harm to other citizens, health care costs, lower public security, causing surveillance and security costs to rise, etc. Cutting costs at the source leads to less costs downstream. Crazy, I know. Moreover, it's a competitive advantage in the global post-industrial economy. Would it be strange if societies that are great at increasing emotional, social, and collective intelligence become the most competitive ones in terms of innovation, capital investment, and quality of life? The terrible truth is human beings are not equals. Human development matters and it can be studied in coherent and reliable ways. According to Hanzi and others, human development is split across four aspects. It takes the best out of all other theories and marries them into one coherent framework of human development. Cognitive complexity is about how many layers of complexity you can peek into. How abstract of a thinker you are, it mostly has to do with IQ. Unfortunately, it cannot be improved without morally questionable eugenics. It's a slow process of evolution, trending upwards but over long periods of time. Luckily, it bears almost no correlation to happiness. Symbolic code has to do with how much and how high quality knowledge you have, how you understand the functioning of the world around you. It goes archaic, Faustian, post-Faustian to modern, postmodern, and metamodern. Anyone can install better code, though successful integration unfortunately depends on cognitive capacity at least to a degree. Subjective states are simply how you're feeling. State is generally improved through positive feedback by completing work, good relationships, love and sex, as well as things that benefit health and physiological well-being. It can be radically developed through meditation as well as other practices of the mind and the body. States span across 13 levels and three stages, low, medium, and high. Getting a person just one level up, from example, seven somewhat uneasy to eight satisfied, and the resulting behavior changes could have a huge effect at the societal level. Depth is most often associated with wisdom and old age. It's the number of states that have become an inseparable part of us, integrated into our memories and personalities. It's not knowledge or any particular belief, it's just one's wordless relationship to existence itself. It can be split into dark and light, where dark depth is developed by successful acceptance of tragedy, by facing fundamental hopelessness and deciding to carry on, whereas light depth is developed by spending lots of time in high states. Value memes are the aggregate of the above. Think spiral dynamics on steroids. What wisdom teachers and people of great depth, people with newest code and highest states all seem to have in common is going beyond materialism and selfishness, as well as a belief in the importance of being good-hearted and treating others well. It seems obvious that safe, efficient, and technologically advanced societies that take care of their people also spur their growth into higher value memes. However, Greater depth and higher states without new code simply results in spiritual arrogance. Civilization develops in ways that destroy others. Exploitative chairmen in boardrooms and even fundamentalist terrorists all are simply developmental imbalances. None are seen as evil, just developmentally challenged. Now the key is not to be condescending or feel superior. You must treat these people with respect and dignity regardless of how mentally challenged you think they are. Since this work will be happening over decades, we must learn to actively and consciously manage all of the existing value memes in the new game of life. Whoever has mastered the most perspectives wins. As opposed to the class struggle of postmodernists, metamodernists define themselves through the struggle of value memes against value memes. The people most likely to succeed in the new post-industrial societies are those who are creative, well-connected, socially and emotionally intelligent, idealistic, educated, and adept with digital tools. They are another triad. Hackers are good at building solutions for bypassing capitalist ways of distributing and exchanging goods and services 
digitizing and gamifying education, building applications for solving social problems, and improving democratic deliberation apps for anything from measuring heart rates or our environmental impact to whistleblowing on abuses. Hipsters are helping us orient, make sense, and find meaning. They are artists, designers, thinkers, social entrepreneurs, and writers. They develop ideas of post-humanism, complexity, participatory politics, and social movements, critiques of wage labor, ecological and social resilience, personal and organizational development. Hippies are creating lifestyles, habits, and practices that make life happier and healthier. They understand meditation, contemplation, diets, physical training, communication, sexuality, and life wisdom. They are providing social and personal technologies for improving health, happiness, community, and enchantment in a strange, alienating world. Unlikely allies, the yoga bourgeoisie are rich and successful urban dwellers who also found that money is not the answer to happiness and therefore cultivate self-awareness, authenticity, and intimacy. Aggregated around yoga parlors, self-help courses, and coaches, they often work in tandem with the above anti-establishment archetypes. They are united by an alternative relationship to work in the market, working by a different social and economic logic. They are intrinsically motivated and seek self-realization rather than extrinsic motivators like money. You are seeing more and more people whose lives are no longer governed by the logic of economic capital. They are forming a united front against the capitalist society, a subtle yet unprecedented revolution of cultural and social capital. The main idea of political metamodernism is to create a society that mitigates everyday suffering and uses a range of social technologies and political strategies to support the psychological growth of all humans. We need to conspire to enable, educate, and seduce humanity into taking the path towards a more existential and sustainable future, to hijack the political, economic, and cultural systems and create a fairer, more transparent, and caring society, to push towards social entrepreneurship, peer-to-peer -peer production, sharing economy, and democratic dialogue techniques such as art of hosting. By the way, to conspire simply means to breathe together. We must learn to listen and see with each other's eyes, to merge our realities and see how all perspectives are a part of reality. Sorry, ANCAP, it's not about free market maximalism. The future society won't be a socialist utopia, and likewise eco-fascism won't save the world. It's about finding the fine balance between the three. A lot of issues aren't fit for nation states. There are problems to be solved at the local or city level, problems to be solved at the corporate level, at the state level, continental and global levels. Political metamodernism is transnational, so is metagame. Metagame doesn't need any great scheme for how to build a perfect new society and make everything better. The only thing we need to scheme is how to help people get better, level up, take control of their lives, and help their communities. It just so happens that DAOs and Web3 in general are revolutionary new technology to empower people to build their own organizations, experiment with governance tools, build institutions and economies, ultimately rebuilding societies from ground up. Our main point is that everybody deserves to live a meaningful life with a supporting community, knowledge on how to better themselves, and tools for making an impact. DAO space is simply our starting niche. Subscribe and wait for the second and final part of this series. Also for the interview with Hans Freinach, I'll put it in the description below. Then wait a bit longer for metagame and game B and in a little bit longer fractal societies also check out my episode with metagames founder pete in dowing impactful conversations episode two if you're trying to exit to commune with others like you to vibe with your tribe so to speak 
and you live in one of these 21 countries, United States, Canada, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Panama, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Brazil, Portugal, UK, France, Greece, Spain, Germany, Italy, Israel, India, South Africa, Hong Kong, Australia, or New Zealand, please connect with me and let's figure out how you get onto that perfect dream property of your solar punk dreams, of your meta modern ideal reality. If you liked this video and you want to support what I do, you can find me on Patreon or on my Discord channel. You can support me starting at $3 a month. You'll get an exclusive role and access to exclusive content, as well as get your name featured at the end of one of these videos. As you can notice, there is no one featured at the end of this video. Please.